Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's having a beautiful 4th of July weekend. Uh, I know we are over here. Um, weather's beautiful, which is great. Um, uh, we are actually uh, getting ready for a trip here coming up soon. We're going to the um, BWC, BWCA, which is called the uh, Boundary Waters uh, Canoe Access Area, and that's in... Um, uh, northern Minnesota and basically you go up there and you get an outfitter and um, uh, you kind of do a quasi backpacking but with canoeing through all these lakes exploring bring you I'm gonna bring you guys some good content to that so first time I've ever been there so the first time I'm gonna be seeing it is the first time maybe some of you will be seeing it so uh, hope you can join me on that little adventure we're gonna do a little uh, I'm gonna show you the sites do a little camping and cooking on there it's gonna be pretty simple but um, I think that the scenery will uh, make up for that. So that should be pretty fun. Um, uh, hey, hey, so let's get right to it. What are we doing this afternoon? Well, I'll tell you guys something recently that happened. Actually, this happened a while back, and I've been hearing about it, so to speak. So in any event, um, my mom, who you guys have seen on the channel before, uh, came to me uh, about a month or two ago when I had kind of stopped doing the videos, took a little break, and uh, said, well, you know, I've been eating a lot of chicken corn chowder out of a can. So why don't you just make that on the Dave and Luna show? That's what she calls it. And so she's like, I bet you could make a great chicken corn chowder. So I, I thought about that and I was like, well, yeah, I think I could probably pull that off. So uh, thought about it a little bit, came up with my own recipe. Um, and that is what we are going to be doing tonight. So uh, pretty simple little dish, kind of a light dish. Well, it's a little, it's a little heavy. You know, I like to jazz things up a bit, but um, it should be a good, uh, good uh, meal for tonight. And then, of course, I'm going to share that with my mom as well. Um, uh, so when I bring you guys back, I will show you what we are going to be working with. Man, somebody is so snuggly today. So snuggly. I think she wants to get in her pool, so she's waiting till we finish the, uh, the video. Um, okay, uh, like I said, I hope all of you are having a great 4th of July. Um, look forward to you showing you the upcoming adventures. And uh, hey, cheers, everybody. Um, if you aren't already and like this type of content, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to get those notifications. I'll see you guys in a bit. And we are back. Wow. <laughs> Look at that bouquet of yummy ingredients. Let's just start from the left and we will work our way around. Of course, we got those uh, skin on uh, baby red potatoes. Cut those up, dice those up in uh, what would be considered a soup-sized uh, cut. For that we've got some red bell pepper back there some diced carrots some diced celery some diced white onion of course some garlic we're going to mince that up star of the show right well co-star so to speak we've got our uh chicken there and what that is is um that's a uh, uh kind of a roughly diced uh not diced pardon me roughly chopped uh shredded chicken that works there back there we got a little um italian parsley for garnish we've got some herbs there um we've got some thyme and some tarragon, and I'm gonna show you guys a special way to integrate that into the soup without getting all of the um, herb piece in the, pieces in there. We just want the essence of all that. So that's all that. Of course, back there, we got some spices. We got, um, you know, from previous soup recipes, I like to use those herb ox. Uh, it's like a chicken uh, bouillon powder. It works really well in soups. Um, got some garlic powder. Uh, we got salt and pepper, a little uh, chopped basil back there, or dried basil, pardon me. And then, whoa, the second star co-star so i speak of course we got some niblet corn i like the corn to be um have some crunch to it i don't really like that soft corn i like a really crunchy corn so that's what that's going on there um what's going to make this uh, a really creamy um chicken corn chowder is we're going to make a roux and then integrate that into our broth wait broth where the heck is the broth they well, bring you guys around we uh, had a uh, chicken recently so that i um uh, once we were done with it, all you do is you throw that in some water, let that simmer for several hours. You get end up with a really nice, beautiful uh, broth. So that's going to be the base of our soup. But let me bring you back to what I was mentioning before, the roux base of the chowder. And so basically you're going to make a roux, which is butter and flour. Uh, we're going to cook that down and then we're going to add um, some tempered uh, milk, you see right there, and some heavy cream, which is going to turn up to a rich white uh, white gravy type consistency of sauce. Um, and that's going to be really yummy and add a beautiful creamy flavor to our chowder. 
back there we've got some um, uh, some garnish. We got some chopped green onions, some uh, uh, medium cheddar, and of course some bacon, which is going to go in there. So as you guys can see, we have got some beautiful ingredients, and it looks like a lot, but really, um, you know, half the work is just dicing all this stuff up. We're going to let this simmer down. It's going to be uh, it's just going to be really flavorful and hearty and a traditional. And um, I think you're all going to like it. So hang on. I'll bring you back and we'll get this recipe going. Okay, we've got our cast iron skillet uh, ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to get some color on um, some of those veggies before we integrate them into our chicken stock. And so uh, you saw that bacon earlier, which we're going to use later as a garnish. But we saved some of that love that came off the bacon this morning when we cooked it. And that would be some bacon drippings. And that's going to give the nice flavor and also color um to our veggies so that is nice and warm so let's get those carrots down here and that's what we want to hear we want to hear that nice sizzle and our onion okay and our celery our mirepoix as they say okay and our red bell pepper and what we'll do is we'll let that cook down for a little bit and then we will um, add our minced garlic. But like I always mention, uh, you don't want to um, put that garlic in too quick because it will have a tendency to burn. So you want to let it cook down a little bit. Let's get a little salt and pepper down on there. All right. And our pepper, a little fresh crack yet. All down on there, you can never have too much. Well, you probably could have too much, but I like the pepper, so uh, that looks about right. Let's get that mixed around real good. And I would say we're going to let this cook down for, let's say, 8 to 10 minutes on a uh, medium. And then we will integrate that into our soup, our stock, I should say. And I will show you guys the next step. Okay, as you guys can see, we've got our stock uh, up to a nice, slow rolling boil. We finished uh, sauteing those uh, beautiful vegetables. We've got those added. Of course, we've got our, our beautiful onions and celery and carrots and bell pepper. And then at the end there, we added um, our garlic. Um, and that had a nice cook on there, a nice saute. So that looks great. So to that, move this to the side, we are going to add our red potatoes. So let's get those in there. Okay, like that. Get that out of the way. Integrate that in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to let all that come to a nice uh, simmer for maybe half an hour, uh, 45 minutes. We want all those um, uh, vegetables and potatoes to get nice and tender. Um, let's get a little, uh, some herbs in there. We got some dried basil in there. We've got that herb ox uh, bouillon that I mentioned earlier. That goes right in there. All right. Okay, and we've got some garlic powder. It probably ends up about a teaspoon or two in there of that. Some pepper and salt, of course. Because always makes things better. Smells great already. A little bit more salt. I'm going to go easy on the salt because we can always add it later, but we cannot take it away. So there's that. And then I mentioned I was going to do something with cool with those herbs. And what that is, is whenever you want to use fresh herbs, you can see what I did there. But you don't want all the little pieces of herb to get into the soup. What you can do is you can get a little bit of cheesecloth. You can wrap those herbs up, get a knot on there. So, we've got, of course, we've got that tarragon and thyme in there. And what's going to happen is all the um, all the goodness of those herbs and the um, savoriness and the uh, – we're going to get everything out of those herbs that we want without all the little pieces. So, it helps a lot when you're making soup. And we'll just take that out after everything's all cooked. So, that can just go right in there. And like I said, we're going to let this cook down for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And that will be that. What I'm gonna do in the meantime, is you can see in this pot over here to the side, we wanna keep get our milk and our cream up to a nice temperature, not even simmering, just up to temperature. So later when we integrate that into our, um, into our sauce mix, it will be, it, it won't separate. You can't add cold cream and milk into hot mixture or you could end up with a 
separated uh, heavy cream, which would not be good. And so we want to just bring that up to just a nice warm temperature. Um, and like I said, that'll make more sense later when we integrate that into um, into our uh, sauce that we make. So when I bring you guys back, we will move on to the next step. Okay, as you guys can see, we've got our um, pot boiling over here. The uh, vegetables have gotten nice and tender. Um, so now at this point, what we're going to do is we have some butter starting to melt here, which is going to be for our roux. So we'll get that up to about a medium heat. Let's go ahead and earlier we did not add our chicken and our corn. The reason being is because they were already cooked. So we didn't want to cook the heck out of them. So we can add them towards the end of the cook just so they can nice and get integrated with everything else without overcooking. So there was our chicken. We got it added, added in. And then, of course, our beautiful uh, crunchy niblet corn will go in there as well. Well, that looks wonderful. This is a big old pot of stew, so we will be freezing a lot of this and then giving some of it away because I know, for example, I mentioned earlier, my mom is going to be very excited that she's getting the soup. So anyway, that's going to continue to cook. We've got our roux, our butter melting, as I mentioned earlier for that. So let's turn that up a tad and we will get our flour. We'll start to get our flour integrated in there. That's about probably a half cup to maybe two thirds cup of uh, flour. And we just, what we want to do is we just want to work that flour around. And what happens here is you integrate your flour nicely into that butter and you cook the flour taste out of there. So you want to let that flour cook for Oh, one or two minutes, fully integrated. And then we'll start adding our liquid from our soup and also from our cream that's tempered back there. And what's going to happen is that as that moisture from the, uh, the, the liquids evaporates, we end up with a nice gravy. And this is the base for any kind of gravy. You might make it a holiday or also any, any kind of like bechamel sauce for like a macaroni and cheese, or anytime you might want a white gravy for anything. This is kind of that traditional preparation method for doing that. So we just want to keep working that around. You can see we got a nice color on there. You do want to cook, like I said, cook that flour taste out of there for just a couple minutes there before you start adding your liquid. And let's continue to cook that around. And once that gets into that gravy-like consistency is when we will add it to our soup and that's going to give it that nice creamy texture. All right, it's looking pretty good. We will get our ladle and start integrating some, some of that liquid into there. So first we'll start with our, our soup there. Like that. And of course, we'll just continue to stir that. We don't want any lumps. Like that. Let's give it a stir. Start integrating that in. Turn that down a bit. Start adding our milk cream mixture. I could probably just get added in there at this point. Like that, get that out of the way. And then, like I said, what you want to do is just continue to stir that. We're going to end up with a beautiful, thick, gravy-like consistency, which is going to go into our soup. So, like I said, let me continue to stir this. I'll bring you guys back once that's ready to get mixed in, and we'll show you what we do next. So, as you guys can see, we ended up with a beautiful, thick, creamy, Bechamel, well, bechamel would be with cheese, but this is um, a nice thick, creamy gravy base. And what this is going to do now is we're going to add this into our chicken corn chowder. And that is what's going to make it so yummy. So that's going to go right into that pot there. Ooh, ooh, there is the good stuff. All right. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So we'll get that out of the way. And bring this over so you can see what we're working with here and give that a nice stir we're just going to integrate that all into there 
Oh boy, that's the good stuff right there. You can already see that beautiful chowder consistency that you probably would recognize. And that's gonna to continue to thicken up. It's gonna give that a beautiful taste and thickness. And like I said, we're gonna to continue to cook that on low. And once this is all done, I will bring you guys back and we will show you how we serve that up. Okay guys, it is show time. Let me show you how we are gonna plate this up. So we see we made a little crostini back there. We had a little French bread, a little bit of butter on there. Pairs well with this. Let's get a little bit of this soup in there. And of course I took that um, herb packet out. So you wanna to remember to take that out of there once you get your soup plate, plated up or bowled up, I should say. So that's how that's gonna look like there. That looks great. Let's get a little bit of this green onion on there for garnish, like that. Of course, we got our, our bacon on the top. A little bit of queso. Oh boy, a little queso. And then just a little bit of this Italian parsley, I think is gonna go well with that. So, as you can see, that looks wonderful. It looks great, smells great, but we never know until we go in for that big bite. So hold on, we'll be back for that. Okay guys, going in for that big bite. I may have snuck some uh, hot sauce in there because you know how I like that. So this looks so good. Um, let us see what we ended up with here. Hold on. Mmm. Mmm. No, oh, there was such layers of flavor there. You got all those beautiful veggies and then the richness of the cream um, and then the toppings. So beautiful, such a wonderful soup. I'm gonna go in for another bite. Let's see what we got. Mmm. Mmm. Okay guys, this turned out perfectly. Thank you for joining me again today. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this type of content and aren't, aren't, aren't already, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up button and get those notifications. We will catch you guys in the next one. Catch you later, bye.